Hey everybody and welcome to the next episode of It's Bananas with Jeremy Fisher. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. This happens every Monday at 9 a.m. And if you guys enjoy the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. On this week's episode, we have Janice Israeloff. Janice, thank you so much for tuning in. I'm clean. You're clean? Perfect. Did you stock up on all of them? No name. They're no name. No, I didn't stock up. I, I'm old okay. school. I, okay. I clean old school, but I have a couple for lazy days. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Making sure you're uh, keeping sanitized they, every time you leave the house. Ladies, they double as makeup remover. Oh, there you go. I mean, are you even, are you even needing makeup? I mean, <laughs> well, I feel makeup is an essential service, but apparently yeah. not. Sephora is closed. That was for the uh, ladies. If you don't know, with Sephora, do they still do delivery? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think it takes a month. I ch actually tried to order some um, craft supplies, and they yeah. said it would be here in a month. At oh the time, I thought a month uh, it would all be over, but I may actually. Yeah, it's definitely not because I don't know if you've heard the recent news from like Justin Trudeau. It's like we're not going back to normal until we have a vaccine. So as as, until that happens, <laughs> as long as he keeps um, saying dumb shit and they make videos about moist, I'm yeah, good. Yeah, I was gonna say moist. Was, yeah. I'm it's very moistly. <laughs> that um, that video of the song was uh, was really funny. So yeah, <laughs> he can come on the news every day and uh, do stupid shit, and I'm good with that. He's Perfect. doing a pretty good job, though. I mean, we could have the other guy in the other country. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, exactly. It's better we have this guy. It's a uh, it's a good reality show that we can watch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. All right. So Janice, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um. Well, um, I used to be a comic um, until, uh, was it March 13th? <laughs> <laughs> I think that was the and, day that they cut off all the clubs. So, uh, I don't know. Um, yeah, I was, I was pretty happy. I was pretty busy was doing stuff. I had just come back from Crickets and Thunder Bay. Um, yeah, I, I did four shows there. Uh, How was it? There. It was amazing. And, uh, you know, I was like, yeah, I'm going to do this. And I was booked on a festival in the States, uh, this like um, feminist lady festival. And I'm like, yeah, oh, okay. I'm going to go do this. But then all that, you know. Kind of I think it was for the better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. Eh? I don't know. I, <laughs> I mean, I, imagine I, being stuck in the States right now. Like, no, oof. they canceled it. I, I like, yeah. I, yeah, they canceled it. Um, I was supposed to go there April 21st or something April, around that time. And mm -hmm. um, they canceled it b before then. So they okay. said, we're going to go ahead. At that time, they were saying groups of less than 150. <laughs> yeah. You know, and then it was groups of less than 50. And then I, I decided, no, I'm not, I'm not going. Yeah. Yeah. And then I was supposed to do this thing in Guelph. And then I was, you know, I was doing shows at Yuck Yucks and festivals mm -hmm. and stuff like everyone else, all the other comics. And I... I you know, the shows are great, but what I really miss is, uh, is like the rusty nail. Yeah, the rusty nail. <laughs> going, to, going to those uh, those mics. I call them the dirty boy mics. Yeah, I actually like those. I got. I really like the rusty nail just because it was one of those rooms where you had to like work really hard just to get everybody's attention. And it's like, as soon as you got that attention, they were just heckling you. So it's like, oh my yeah. God, thank you. Do I want it? Yeah. I am. I, um... I don't know. I, I like those rooms because um, because no one's listening. You can really just say whatever the fuck you want. You know? Pretty much, yeah, and which now, is really fun. Now, being like online, like I did one online show. I did um, Mommy Needs a Drink, uh, Tara Henderson's show, and mm. it was great. And there was people, it, uh, but I feel like now the shows are recorded. You have to like be careful what you say. Yeah, you have to you have to be more measured in your approach because at the rusty nail you could say the most offensive thing and nobody would care. They'd forget the next day. <laughs> yeah, you could just release release the poison of your soul, you know, and like nobody could you know have that, you know, to come back at you or not book you again or whatever. So yeah, more sort of inhibited of what I can say online and because. You know, people are watching. They're watching with their with their kids sometimes. Run in the room, and they're you're going into their houses. So you, I feel like you have more of a responsibility to actually write, you know, proper jokes. Yeah. <laughs> As opposed to just like you know saying something outrageous and releasing releasing the poison, which can be funny in certain types of rooms. But I I don't know. Maybe I'm. Yeah. Just well, I mean, like with online, it's different just because there's so much, and I think 
it should be okay saying as long as you're not like really offensive with what you're saying but just trying to make it seem like yeah this is a joke i'm laughing ha 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 this yeah, is I funny suppose, uh... Although yeah. I did, I did uh, watch an open mic um, online recently, and one guy was just doing the most offensive material. Like, he, of course, he, and yeah. So, and we were just, and you get the people that watch live. You could get, you could look at like their reaction, and some of them were just like, <laughs> yeah, know? they're like, what, what room? room did I just come in? <laughs> And it's like, like normally you, when you go to a real open mic club and you see like somebody being really offensive, and you look around at everybody else and like, what's going on? Yeah, you, you don't see the individual things because the light is in your face. You've got yeah. the mic, right? Oh, yeah, I have a mic here. Like when I do online shows, like I had this mic. Like I, I was thinking maybe I would just like, you know. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> just make it seem like there you were you actually go. in a club. Yeah. 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 Then it was, it seemed pretty stupid. And I'm sitting down. I have this, this, you like my backdrop? I, my I love it. Isn't one of those uh, Japanese, like, um, what are they called? Oh, like those screens? Yeah, those yeah. screens. Uh, I actually it's have actually, my internet right here, so I don't even know why I never looked this up. Um, it's just uh, I got it from Walmart uh, a couple of years ago. Yeah. To um, sort of called? section off. I I have a like a basement and like I have a, like a, a pull-out couch. So when you come down the stairs to like make it private. Yeah. Like so the person if they're sleeping over, they have privacy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. But I, I mean, whenever I. Now. Yeah. I live in a bachelor, so there's no privacy here. It's just one long room. Yeah, this would be great. You could, like, split up the room. I was thinking about getting one of those, actually, just for, like, just between, like, my bed and my couch, just to kind of, like, have that little dividing space. So, yeah, if somebody actually wanted, like, whenever a sibling wanted to sleep over, because I could just see them on the couch, but I'd rather, like, give them that, that personal space. Yeah, but now exactly. I don't, but now I don't have to worry about that, so it's all good. <laughs> I know, silver linings, motherfucker. Yeah, right? <laughs> I love silver linings. You can go out now as a woman. You know, you never get catcalled. Oh, yeah, one exactly. Guy cat, <laughs> one got catcalled the other day. He said to me, get the fuck away from me, bitch. Six feet. <laughs> Say stick six feet away. Six feet. Oh, God. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Go best way to keep, Yeah, best way to keep away from people. Are you still doing, uh, are you still walking outside, like trying to get some exercise? Or are you just actually like staying inside most of the time? No, I have to get outside. I, yeah. I have to go for walks. I, it's yeah. a mental health thing. I don't care. I mm. mean, I, I stay, I go at night when there's nobody around or um, there, there's really actually nobody in Leslieville right now. It's really dead. Uh, okay. so I guess people are really abiding. I don't live in a area where there's a, um, it's residential ish. And mm -hmm. if I walk along, if I walk east, if I walk east on Dundas, early in the morning or late at night and even sometimes in the afternoon there really is absolutely nobody on the sidewalk and when people see me they cross the street now that they were doing that before anyway so yeah <laughs> Ugh. Right. yeah <laughs> the fuck is that bitch <laughs> <laughs> but they, yeah so we just kind of like cross the street it's great yeah um, so yeah people walking their dogs um usually we just distance um mm -hmm. and i don't go out every day yeah that's good. But yeah, I, I, I try to shop in like buy a lot of stuff that I need. Mm -hmm, like buying in bulk. I don't know. I don't go to Costco. Yeah, uh, no, I know. Like I, I, I keep going to Loblaws, but whenever I go, there's like they're always sold out of like pretty much all the good stuff. So I'm like, what's the whole point of going here? And then I go to another place that's like it's more of like off brand. It's called Copas and they're like fully stocked. They got like full vegetables. They got they got toilet paper still. And I'm yeah. like, why is nobody ever like really going to these smaller places? Like, yeah. I don't understand why are you just going to like the big ma uh, name brand like grocery stores. Yeah, I I wouldn't go to Costco. I wouldn't go to Walmart. Why is Walmart still open? Like, I wouldn't go to. I guess they have groceries yeah. there. I yeah, they, to, they have um, the grocery section. I go to No Frills, um, and uh, I try to get in and out of there. I know exactly what I'm going in there for. Do they have lineups? There are there are lineups, but um, I usually wear a mask. Uh, okay. La last week, I um, <laughs> I spent all week uh, thinking I was going to be like you know the lady who makes masks for hospitals. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just, have a sewing nope. machine. I was yeah. I've had a sewing machine for about thirty years that just was sitting in a cupboard. Mm -hmm. I went through a phase about twenty something years ago when my kids were little that I was going to be the lady that, you know, like Julie Andrews, like I was going to make dresses out of curtains. Mm -hmm. 
And I, I sewed these masks and it took me eight hours to sew one mask and it just fell off afterwards. Oh my God. <laughs> and you're like, you know what? This isn't for me. I'll leave it up to the professionals. So like I wear, I put it on and like, I actually put it on for other people. Like if I'm going for a walk on the street, if I see someone, I put the mask on. So like that person, it's like, I'm thinking of that person because it doesn't really protect me that much. Yeah. It, it is double-sided. It's made out of a bed sheet and it has flannel. I did all the things it said to do, like to make the most protective mask. But I don't have the proper elastic. Yeah. I'm not going to, you know, go to a, I can't go to a store and get what I need. So I literally cut, was cutting up pillowcases. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But I do have a mask. I do wear that uh, when I go. If I have to go to shoppers, or no frills because there are some mm. people that don't. They don't stay back. Oh yeah, no. Like people just don't care about boundaries. I've and when I was at Loblaws the other day, um, there was this woman that was just like standing like right in the middle, and she wouldn't move. And there was like a bunch of people that were trying to get by, and she was like standing in the middle of the aisle. And I'm just like, pl I'm looking at her. I'm like, you should get out of the way. You're not holding Holy a cart. You're, you're not holding please. any groceries at all. You're just standing in a way, and you're like. You're blocking up everybody. Just move out of the way. And I kept seeing her do this throughout the entire store. I'm like, holy shit, just leave. Just leave the store, please. Yeah. Let your mom do the shopping. Yeah, I, I, I don't get it. There was one guy and he was like he was like touching all the beets. Like I was buying beets. Like Oh my god, yeah. I hate that. I'm like like dude, just take the first fucking bunch and put it in your car and get the yeah, fuck out of my I, way. I actually saw, oh, I hate it. I hate, behind this guy, right? And he didn't yeah. have a mask. I'm waiting yeah. six feet behind the and I'm like, great. Like, like, you know, so I went around, I bought some other stuff. I came back to the beats. He was still at the beats. Of course. Fucking guy, oh, man. I, yeah, I actually, I, I, grocery shopping is like, it's like the worst. I stocked up on a lot of dry things like rice yeah. and, you know. The produce is the worst though. Cause like I saw some people actually putting produce back with their hands. So they took like this, this Just woman, she had, yeah, she put the she put the produce back with her hand because she was just like trying to figure out where to put it. She's like, "Oh, I'm gonna put it over there," and they took it back. She's like, "Oh, I'm just gonna put it over there." I'm like, "What are you doing?" Like, I, I, people really need to pick up produce the way that they pick up dog shit. Like, put your hand through the bag and then pick f like fish for the ones that you want. They need to eyeball the produce. Yeah. Pick it up. Put it in their fucking cart. Yeah, or like do like the bag thing because if you put yeah. if you get like one of those plastic bags and you like kind of like turn it inside yeah. out. Just pick up yeah. the fruit like that or whatever, the veggies, and then just, like, enclose the bag, and there you go. Um, the main thing is when I get home, I kind of, like, wash stuff with soap and water. Like, I've... Yeah. I've, I'm, 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 I'm going to be... Do you, wash your, do you wash your veggies with soap and water, too? Just sometimes, to make sure? <laughs> yeah, I always wash them, and sometimes I do. Yeah. Um, but I think if you, like, you're cooking them and you're boiling them and stuff, like, I don't think... Yeah, it'll you know, just kill The stomach it. acid kills anything that's on the food, so mm -hmm. it's more like touching your face. Yeah. Um... Yeah, the produce thought, you know, it's really funny. I used to be like, plastic is evil. Why do they wrap <laughs> cucumbers in plastic? Why do they wrap broccoli in plastic? You know, I wouldn't even put like vegetables in a plastic bag. I would just take them and put them in my cart. Now I'm like, thank you. Yeah, for yeah. Having everything. <laughs> yeah, but they have those, um, they have those reusable ones though. Now I've seen where you can just, um, I guess. Oh, reusable it. bags? Yeah, like the reusable bags for your produce. So you don't have to. They're like three or four bucks oh, for one bag. I wouldn't I wouldn't pay it that much. I I'd just rather just, have the free bag. I just reuse the plastic bags. Like I saved yeah. them and I just reuse them. But now I just buy stuff wrapped in plastic. Yeah. Plastic for the win. It's making a comeback. Yeah, who cares about the environment? Fuck those turtles. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's crazy because... People have like medical issues they need to deal with that have nothing to do with COVID-19 mm -hmm. and they're not able to get to the doctor. Oh no. Like, I'm supposed to see the doctor about certain things. Cause I have like, like issues, like lady problems. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. Just, which is a whole other podcast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which I thought maybe of starting and you can't. Hey, why not? What's that? I said, Hey, why not? Just start it. You can't go to the doctor. You have to stay home and suffer. Yeah. You know, what if you well, have cancer? Unless, unless you're dying. Well, then. <laughs> you need chemo or. Yeah. Are they still not doing that then? I don't know what they're doing. You have yeah. more risk of, of getting COVID going to the hospital than I don't know. Yeah. But um, yeah, a couple of weeks ago, like my girlfriend's like grandpa, he had a, like a minor stroke. So he had to go to the hospital. But uh, they're screening everybody before they come in to make sure if they have the symptoms or not. If they, they have anything, then they always make sure, like, oh, 
you're gonna have to like wear the mask and uh, put everything like all of this stuff on just to make sure that everybody's like sanitary and because they don't want to obviously spread everything in a hospital because like baby it? babies still have to be delivered too so there's still pregnant moms in there yeah can imagine being pregnant now oh well you couldn't oh, no. like, um, I, cu I couldn't imagine <laughs> that's crazy yeah my sister actually just had a baby a couple months ago, so like, it's a perfect well, time to, it's a perfect what? time to have a kid, I guess. <laughs> I I was a stay at home mom for twelve years. I was pretty much quarantined for twelve years anyway. So, oh. <laughs> except my kids went off to school eventually, and then yeah. I went back into the workforce. But you kind of quarantine when you have a baby, anyways. Um, yeah, there are people that are out with their kids. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, they have to take their kids out, go for a walk. I kind of stay away from them. I feel like kids are the most, the worst germ breeders. And I'm in the oh, age yeah. category. I mean, they don't, almost... they don't think about all of this other stuff that we think about. And they're like, oh, I'll be fine. Yeah, and kids touch everything and they touch each other. They do. And they touch their faces all the time. Yeah. Yeah, they don't cover their mouth. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, like, you think, you know, I'm walking down the street, like I should cross the street to protect a child, but I'm more like, get your fucking germy kid away from me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sorry, boy. parents. It's okay. It's acceptable right now. We're child. living in, we're living in unprecedented times, as everybody oh, keeps yes. calling it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Eh? What's Justin Trudeau gonna say today? Yeah, we're living in uncertain times. Yeah, I mean, everybody, like a lot of people, were already saying like this was gonna happen. Did you watch that one Netflix uh, series about pandemics? No, I didn't. But I watched Contagion before. <laughs> Oh, did you? <laughs> yeah, like all the most pandemic. Years. Yeah. So I was watching this series and it was like explaining, it kind of like takes both sides. So it has like all of the scientists and like what the research that they're doing about how do they kind of like uncover all of these um, diseases and stuff so that they can prevent it from happening. And this was like done, in, I think, with like 2018, 2019. And at the end of it, they're like, oh, by the way, like we're expecting a new pandemic soon. And then like, bam, this happens. Like, holy shit, that's just weird how they were expecting something to happen like this. Yeah, I feel like, you know, they knew it was going to happen. And mm -hmm. people always there's always a group of scientists that know what's up, but no one listens to them. Like they're like, oh, you know, or the guy that lives in, you know, on a hill, you know, some, yeah. the weirdo on the hill, you know, that went through World War One, you know, and he's still yeah. alive on the hill. And he's like, he's like the soothsayer, like he knows everything. And everyone goes, oh, yeah, you know, Jimmy up there on the hill, he's fucking nuts. And like Jimmy up on the hill is the last guy standing, right? Yeah, and, yeah. <laughs> blood comes like, you know, his house is up high, like he's yeah. away from people. Like, no one listens, like no one. They listen to Jesus. People still listen to Jesus because he's going <laughs> to cure you. You're, you're like, oh, my God, I was reading, I was watching this one, um, this one interview because this guy was like going up to like this this uh, church and like the people were coming out and so he had like his long boomstick and everything to like kind of ask them questions and one woman was just like oh no like i'm not gonna get infected because i got jesus's blood all over me or whatever i'm like what are you bathing in like because um jesus if jesus was around right now he would already be arrested for for having like mass gatherings i can't remember who said that but it was really funny some i think a comedian said that <laughs> yeah, I also heard someone refer to joggers as crop dusting the rest of us. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god, it's so you bad around here. Online? Like you go out, I would, a couple weeks, was it a week ago or a couple weeks ago, I went for a walk along the trail and I, I just went home. Like, yeah. Something. It's like, okay, I can't do this. This is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. I thought there was nobody there. Um, and the joggers were like, were like running and just like so close to you. Like I just, yeah, so no, I don't. Oh no. When I, I live pretty close to yeah, I live pretty close to the harbor front, uh, so you, like they have that uh, the trails that are there that everybody can uh, can like bike or uh, run on. And I'm, I've always seen so many people just like there. I'm like, what are you doing? Like, do you really need to do this exercise like outside of where everybody else is right now? And you guys are all passing each other. So if somebody yeah. decides to just like cough, like it's still gonna stay in the air for a couple like minutes, and like you yeah. can like the next person that runs by is just gonna get it right in their face. Yeah, no, I, yeah, it's, yeah, I just go around, uh, like, deserted, like, neighborhoods, like, like, late at night, or yeah. early in the morning, or, um, but I, I have a, I have a backyard, I can get outside, but sometimes I just need to get away from my house, like, I'm living yeah. in my house now with two of my grown daughters, one of my daughters was working in South Sudan, mm -hmm. in Africa, she works all over the world with her job, and she came home for a visit, and then, her grandfather died, so she stayed for his funeral, and then mm -hmm. she got stuck here. Yeah. 
No, she's living with me. She's 27. But hey, I mean, like, we're in a good country right now for this to happen. I mean, like, we're handling this really well. Everybody's sticking with the self-isolation. And, like, like if you've seen our numbers, like, they're really good. Like, I think everybody in Canada is doing a really good job. Like, kudos to all the essential workers out there. Yeah, we're we're doing okay. But what concerns me is, like, it's going to, like, die down. And then people are going to think it's okay to just, like, go back to normal. And yeah going to be a second wave oh yeah it's yeah there's going to be like smaller waves that are going to happen and then it's just like until we find like a good vaccine that'll just wipe it out like it's going to keep coming back or treatment i mean they still don't have a vaccine for hiv but I mean, yeah we'll know what like we'll know what it is like we'll know what it means yeah you know like we'll know what quarantining means we'll know what you know what it means to be in a pandemic we'll, we'll, like mm -hmm. the hospitals will be more ready they'll they'll have like the treatments, they'll figure out how to deal with it better. So, well, I mean, right like our now, hospitals, were, our hospitals were already prepared for something like this because when SARS was happening, like they already had all like the quarantining um, setups for the hospitals. So I think that's pretty much like why we're doing really well is because we've already had the system in place. Yeah, but SARS wasn't like this. Like SARS no, was no. working. I remember working in a call center when SARS was happening. We just had hand sanitizer and was yeah, mostly yeah. in the, in the, healthcare sector yeah but SARS wasn't even like as bad as what this is right now no like, uh, it definitely wasn't like I, I remember because I was working and people were like worried about it and they were like washing their hands and using hand sanitizer but it wasn't it wasn't like don't leave your house everything's closed the schools are closed like it yeah. wasn't like everybody <laughs> was just going to work every day and you know kind of like moving away from the guy on the subway and um I don't even w remember people wearing masks yeah I don't know with you mm. but um yeah it crazy times it's... well let's talk about you janice yeah. <laughs> how did you get we'll get back to the comedy aspect i think we talked a lot about corona already <laughs> well how, how did you get started with comedy what got you like what got you bit by the comedy bug well i was an actor uh, my whole life i did yeah. theater um so i did a lot of i uh, did like dinner theater comedy drama and then um and then I had, uh, then I had my kids and then I, I wasn't really, I, I did, I ended up writing one person shows cause I wasn't really getting cast as I got older and I had the kids and I couldn't, you know, go out of town to do a play or go on tour. Mm -hmm. Um, I started up my own theater company back in the, the, I guess the early nineties and was, was doing that. And then I started writing one person shows and, um, they were always like dark comedies, like mm -hmm. dramedies, like stories about my life. I wrote a play called one flew over the cubicle about my dad's alzheimer's and about a woman in search of meaningful work while doing a series of soul-sucking telemarketing jobs <laughs> and it was called one flew over the cubicle and it was kind of well it was definitely based on my life right i was doing yeah. a series of soul sucking i kept getting fired from all these jobs so i thought i would write a play about it at the same time my dad was diagnosed with alzheimer's so i was running back and forth and trying to raise a family and like there was a lot of stuff going on in my life i wrote mm -hmm. this play and um, I did it at the Fringe Festival um, in, um, in Regina, Saskatchewan, and in Ottawa. I did it at Piggyback Fringe. And then I ended up just touring it across the country. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then I wrote, um, I wrote another one after that called um, Martin Seligman is a Douchebag about um, this guy named Martin Seligman. He's actually the founder of Positive Psychology and how positive mm -hmm. psychology is absolute bullshit. And so that's kind of the premise. But at the same time, um, it was about a woman who's wor now working as a recreation therapist in long-term care and she needs some positive reinforcement. So it kind of was like a dark kind of comedy thing. And had a, mm -hmm. I did that at the Fringe. And then what, what happened with that one was that was actually in, um, in a tent. Mm -hmm. in the, in the beer t it was in the beer tent and there was a shed. It was called Shed Shows. And yeah. the shed um, was a paper shed um, that, that, that held seven people. And there was no lighting. It was just like literally a shed and there was like seven chairs could fit in there so mm -hmm. i sold out <laughs> i mean it wouldn't be yeah it wouldn't be hard to sell that out <laughs> sold out at the fringe festival toronto but fringe. at least you yeah i was gonna say at least you can like tell everybody that it was all sold out <laughs> yeah it's great so i'm telling the story i start my show and because i had been doing theater for so long so used to being on a stage with lights blaring in my eyes people sitting all you can see is darkness out there and like i get on stage and i like 
stop my show. And the people were literally like this close to me. And they were like, <laughs> I need it really to bring it down and to really just talk to them. I thought, you know what? I'll take a course in stand up comedy because in stand up comedy, you only, and I, I had, oh yeah, I forgot to mention that I had developed crippling stage fright when I, um, it just went back to doing theater. I took a break when I started doing my one person shows. I developed crippling stage fright. And it mm. usually would take me about five minutes, five, six minutes to get into the play. Like I'd be yeah. really nervous for the first few minutes and then I would settle into the text and, you know, get into it. And I thought if I did stand up, you don't have five, six minutes. It's like yeah. stand up if they don't like you right away, it's really hard to get them back. Yeah, exactly. And you only have like you only have like five or six minutes. So you have to learn how to do that a lot quicker and be a lot comfortable quicker. Yeah, you have to like, you know, you get 10 or then you get 15, then you get 20. But you have to mm. get them off the, off the top. Yeah, exactly. You have to start strong off the top. So I thought that will help me. So I took a comedy class at Comedy Bar. Okay. With, um, it was uh, all women with Don Whitwell. Um, mm -hmm. And it was a all all female comedy um, group. Mm -hmm. uh, course and at the end you get five minutes and you perform at a comedy bar and so that's where I did my first set nice how did that go it was good it's always good because Don makes sure like that you have five minutes of like half decent material you know like, <laughs> that's good you're, yeah you're practicing your set she'll say you know this works better you know like she's helping you right mm -hmm. and uh, so, so it was great um, and then after that I did another class at Second City um, with Joel Buxton and we mm -hmm. we it was uh, comedy two or whatever or comedy three. yeah 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 their program so, that they did there. yeah so i did i did a couple of those classes those classes are great because you're all your friends come um they all laugh mm -hmm. they all clap nobody heckles you, you know, that's good a nice clean venue mm -hmm. <laughs> doesn't smell like piss <laughs> <laughs> you know you don't have some like drunk you know guy that just like rolled it off the street demanding his money <laughs> like, yeah oh, or he starts it. yelling at the, Give yeah, the bartender <laughs> yeah fucking or <laughs> yeah and you don't so, have anybody getting stabbed too which is nice so that's yeah so then i also realized too like in comedy you can just like write all your own material you're only on stage for like 10 minutes five minutes mm -hmm. like with a one person show like i was on stage for a whole hour it was 36 pages of scripted material that i had to remember plus lighting cues the lighting mm -hmm. guy was depending on my cue for my you know um and, uh, you know, it's a lot harder in a way to do a one person show. You need to rehearse it. You can't yeah. just kind of start riffing in the middle. I mean, I suppose you could, it depends on your style, right? Yeah, exactly. And like reading the audience too. Yeah. Like my, my style of one person show was coming from having done plays, mm -hmm. you know, like actual, like scripts and, you know, old fashioned plays <laughs> and then moving to, so now, um, I don't think I could go back to doing that style of solo i think if i did a solo show it would be much more stand-up based much more storytelling and mm -hmm. loose you're a lot looser in comedy so that's how i got into it and uh you know i just i started going to the mics um at first i didn't know anybody i didn't have any friends mm -hmm. and everyone i'm older an older female so it's pretty much invisible and ignored for like the first yeah. year i get bumped like everywhere um i'd be like the last one up you know at groove bar 2 a.m. Yeah. Literally nobody left, just the bartender uh, doing my set. And then mm -hmm. you just keep coming back. People keep seeing you. One time you get up there, you're funny. And they're like, mm -hmm. oh. Well, she's I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know I had it in you. You know, I didn't yeah, know. Yeah. I've had so many people say, I didn't think you'd be funny because, you know, just, just how you look. You know, because I look like you're, you know, your average suburban mom. Even though I don't even fucking yeah. live in the suburbs. I've never lived in the <laughs> suburbs. But you got that look. I got that suburban I mean, you vibe. could create like, oh, yeah, you could create a whole bunch of material just on that. I think I might. I've lived back in downtown my whole life. Before it was yeah. cool. Like, I, I lived <laughs> in this neighborhood when it wasn't cool. Yeah. I owe so you're the, you're the original hipster. <laughs> I owe more money on my house than when I bought it. Wow. Like, my, my house, I, when I, I bought my house, and now I owe, I've mortgaged it, remortgaged, refinanced it so many times that I owe, like, that. I'll be no, I'll I did the math and I li literally will be 97 when I own my house if I ever own my house. Oh my god. But Life of a comedian. <laughs> live in fucking Leslieville, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. Nice. So yeah, I've had people come up to me and say, "Oh, you know, 
And so they think it's funnier because they see this like suburban mom going up there and, you know, talking about, you know, I don't know, having sex. Like, oh, yeah. that's funny. <laughs> yeah. Um, cringe. So how, I don't know yeah, if I'm going to be able to those jokes again. No, I don't know how, yeah. I don't know how anyone's going to, how the humor is going to change after this. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to seeing what happens with all the clubs because, like, a lot of people aren't going to want to go to big venues. Like, the same thing with musicians and, like, big-time comedians and, like, even actors whenever they're doing tours now because they normally do tours and they go and meet all the fans. So that's probably not going to be a thing that happens, at least for a little while. It kind of makes me happy because maybe, you know, maybe now now's my time, you know? Yeah, right? Perusing those small little bars, doing shows to six people. Yeah, right. See, this is where we take over. <laughs> this is where the meek inherit the earth, fuckers. Yeah. It's like I already uh, like had nobody showing up to my show, so I was already prepared for this. Exactly. It's like, <laughs> you know, well, what am I going to do? I'm going to lose income. Like, yeah. I don't have a job either. I, I, I didn't even have income to begin with. <laughs> I worked um, it, I, I worked as a recreation therapist in nursing homes like before mm-hmm. this happened. And then... Um, I stopped going in like weeks ago when there was like when it w- there were some cases appearing and I'm like and then nursing homes were saying oh well we better be careful I just said I don't think I'm going to go in because I was I was going in multiple homes in the city I just stopped going in mm-hmm. and then I'm really glad I did because I didn't want to be responsible for like god forbid I should be asymptomatic and give it to my clients or people there right yeah so now I have no income because I was in- self-employed but I'm yeah. gonna. I, I may be able like, to. Did you? Some, some of yeah, that I was gonna say. Did you apply? Yeah, just apply to it because um, yeah, I've been hearing that. Apply. I've been hearing that if you just apply for it, they'll give you the yeah. money right away, and then if they find out later that you weren't actually like like, like eligible for it, they'll just like take that out on your taxes for next year. Yeah. But so, I mean, at least it gives you the money right now, and so eventually you can ha- you can make more by that time, and then just pay it back. That way, you at least have something for now. Yeah, I got to get on that free money thing. I got to look at all my, um, I got to look at like all that stuff. I've been up and down like with my mood. So some days I'm like, I, I don't want to do anything. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to like binge watch The Handmaid's Tale and, you know, yeah. eat Doritos. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm very um, fortunate that I can still work. Like I'm working from home. Yeah. But uh, like I'm working on um, like TV shows and movies. Uh, but because a lot of them stopped, I don't know how long I'm actually going to be working for. Because it's just like whatever material has been filmed up until a point where they just stopped filming. Yeah, I think people are going to start doing like really cool projects now, like filming. Yeah, like at, yeah, I was going to say, like, I just actually ordered a green screen and um, like a set, like a nice setup. So I'm going to start doing a whole bunch of like cool VFX videos and, and whatnot just to like, kill some time, I guess, and get my uh, get my business out there. Yeah, I still have an agent and now uh, she ha- had had. Um, um, a deal with Penguin Publishers, so uh, I just made a vo- put together a voice tape, uh, mm-hmm. reading a bunch of different things. I I did a uh, um, uh, Jack Russell for Dummies. I I narrated it. Yeah. I kind of brought that. I I'm actually really good at bringing dry text to life. Ha! <laughs> <Is that amazing? laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I can bring dry text to life. Ha! <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Um, so, yeah. so I did that, you know, Jack Russell's like, and it's great. I love doing voice. I have it like a little setup, um, also in my bedroom. I have a little, like a mm-hmm. little like microphone. Um, my husband's also an actor and does voice. Um, so like, are you guys on voices.com then or voice one, two, three, or one of no, those voiceover? No, no. Okay. No, I'm, I'm just with my agent. I have done, I have done, so I did a voiceover the, for the Toronto district school board when my, um, for their web, for the, my daughter's school. To yeah. school, an all-girls school called Hayden Park. It's a TDSB school. It's not a private school. It's a regular school. It's all girls. Mm-hmm. Anyways, I did I did a voiceover for them, and I'm actually pretty good at that too. Is doing the sort of the caring, um, you know, compassionate type of motherly oh. voice. I can yeah. Like, so you're good at faking it. <laughs> <laughs> Damn right. <laughs> How do you think I stay married for thirty years? <laughs> <laughs> I hope your husband watches this. <laughs> um, yeah. So I could do those. So I'm hoping. My my actually dream job would be to like narrate a uh, a nature documentary. Oh, like uh, David Attenborough. <laughs> yeah, but talking like, about I, the three toed sleuths in I, Central America. More like about hyenas, you know. Hyenas, hyenas actually are queen of the jungle. They have eight inch clitorises. They do. 
I do a whole bit about that. I mean, that's just pretty much an oversized, that's just like a undersized dick, if it was human size compared. Male hyenas are actually smaller than female hyenas. Oh. So I'd like to do that yeah. voiceover. Um, yeah. I don't know, we'll see. I mean, so many people are going to be doing, trying to, so many actors are going to be trying to jump on all kinds of bandwagons. Oh yeah, for sure, because like, people are going to want to try to make money, so... I mean, I want to make money, too. That's why I started doing a lot of video editing right now. Because it's yeah. something I'm good at. And, like, with everybody going online, why not just get, like, additional video editing so you can create more stuff while somebody else handles all the editing? Yeah, I wanted to start um, an open mic or a show. But I think because I don't want to pay for Zoom right now because I can't get yeah. money. I was thinking mm -hmm. of just, I have, I actually have the, the free, the free Zoom. You get 40 minutes, right? Yeah, I found this other one. If you want to check it out, um, what is it? It was by uh, Cisco, Cisco WebEx. Oh. Yeah, yeah. If you if everybody looks up like Cisco WebEx, you can actually have up to I think they said up to a hundred people and un un like unlimited time. Cisco, eh? Yeah. So Cisco WebEx, uh, that's way better than Zoom. Like oh, I'm only cool. using I'm yeah I'm only using Zoom right now because of the recording because it allows like both of us to be recorded at the same time. Whereas, like, the WebEx, it only records whoever's talking. And so, like, that person will pop up. I'd rather have, like, both people. I'm not sure, I guess. Okay. It seems better that way. That way, at least you can see both of us. But I don't know. Maybe I'll try it the other way and see how that works. But for everybody that just wants to have, like, at least 100 people and not have to pay, for, uh, like, 20 bucks a month for Zoom, check yeah. out the Cisco WebEx. I'm not sponsored by them, so. <laughs> that would be good for an open mic because nobody's, like – buying like paying but if it was a show people mm -hmm. for shows people actually um like they pay to get into the link yeah so you can actually make money mm -hmm. but how many people are are paying into them well for for Tara's show um quite a few people were there like almost over 55 people i think almost 60 people were in, yeah. at the show you don't really see them um mm -hmm. but they they comment on the yeah. side so they comment ha 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 or that was funny <laughs> yeah so you're you know um because i know i know for like some shows yeah i know for some shows they require you to like show your um camera just so you can see like just so people can see like their reactions and that way they get like a better they get better feedback from that yeah you can see people sometimes um like at the top you can see their reactions um mm -hmm. But then I was thinking, instead of a show, maybe I could just do like what, like a more like a podcast and talk about women's, like get just comics talking about women's health and there how you go. ridiculous this, um, how ridiculous um, women's health, just like something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, so I, mean, I have to find the right thing that I would really like, actually want to like get up and do. Yeah, if anything, just start doing it and then see where it goes from there. Let it grow. Yeah. Um, yeah, because there's a lot of a lot of a lot of issues around women's health that that are pretty um, like no one talks about, mm -hmm. pretty taboo, and like no one talks about. So if you just and, get some like talking yeah, about you it, just I like to talk you, about them on stage at the Rusty Nail. Yeah. <laughs> okay, maybe you should ask me some actual questions. Hey, <laughs> that was an actual question. Okay, my pet peeve. Be... You want to hear my pet peeve in comedy? Okay, what's your pet? The biggest pet peeve you have? totally my own issues okay mm -hmm. i don't mean this against anyone else totally personal my own issues mm -hmm. i hate when people ask me for credits and i hate the whole thing about credits yeah i just, just i don't know it just really triggers me it's like it's kind of like you're kind of like showing off what you did and i, but just, I mean it, in a way it's sort of like a, like a resume for comedians I know, and I understand, like, it's necessary and, like, why people want to know, but I, I kind of feel like as an audience member, because I was an audience member, like, long before I did comedy. I mean, I've been doing comedy for three years, so mm -hmm. three years, really. People think, ah, oh, three years, that's a lo it's not a long time. Like, I'm sorry. Like, if Not I was, really. I mean, like, some people have done it for, like, 10, 20 years. No, in, in if you had any other career and you were doing it for three years, like, if you were a doctor and you were only practicing for three years, like, you know what I mean? Like, if you were yeah. an accountant or even a teacher or even just like working in a company mm -hmm. like it's not a long time so yeah um but that 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 doesn't mean anything i just feel like i don't know people take a credit like you know and they use that and, and it could be a really like good credit like you know um they were on you know conan 
All right. Mm -hmm. So, but they'll use that credit forever. Like, you know, he did the Johnny Carson show, like the Johnny yeah. Carson show. Like, how old are you? Do you yeah. know what I mean? And so I feel like. <laughs> Give like a more updated credit of something recent. It's kind of like I'm. I'm still. I would still be telling period jokes, and you know, when I'm seventy, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like they were fucking <laughs> hilarious back then. <laughs> Kids, yeah. You know. I, so that there's that pet peeve about credits, and that's mm -hmm. also like people use these like random like, won a comedy festival in Buha Makuri. Like, yeah. Where, where's that? Like, you know, it's, the, Sud the Sudbury Comedy Festival. Like, is that okay? Nothing against Sudbury, but like. I mean, I don't know. It just seems like... How many people have even heard of Sudbury to begin with? It's like comparing like a TIFF, like TIFF film festival to like one of those other random ones that just happen at a random theater somewhere in some random like little town. Yeah. It just, they seem ridiculous. And like everybody like is tooting their own horn. Like yeah. it's comedy. I feel like in the scheme of entertainment um, in terms of like there's musicians and then there's actors and I feel like comics are like, we're at the bottom. Like, you know yeah. what I mean? Like we're yeah. below, like we're like, there's compost and they're underneath the compost is where the maggots live. That's yeah. like that's, that's, com that's comedians. Those that's comedian. comedians. That's comedians in Canada. Those are comedians in Canada. But if you're in the U S at least you can make some money. I, I, I guess so. I don't know. I mean, right now I wouldn't want to be in the U S but. Oh no, nobody wants to be in the U S. But it just seems in general, like comics are the ones like, that like point up all the stupidity like it just seems like credits are stupid like it just seems like it doesn't matter how many credits you have like i've gone to a lot of comedy shows and i've laughed at some comics i've never seen never heard of some bro -y dude that just i knew from an open mic and he got up on stage and he didn't give a fuck and i'm laughing mm -hmm. my fucking head off like i'm i think the guy's so funny and yet yeah. some slick guy comes on and it's like he's like Canadian famous and like they spend two minutes ramping on his credits. Yeah. And then he sh his opener is just like garbage. <laughs> it doesn't even get anything. There. Yeah, and he's slick and he's doing crowd work and the audience is laughing. Okay, so I had this conversation with my daughter. She goes, Well, is the audience laughing or is it just your problem? And I go, Well, it's <laughs> literally just my problem. Yeah. Like and they're then, having a blast right now. Like I don't know what it is about me. Like I'm having a horrible time. <laughs> exactly. My problem. Yeah. It's my problem. I don't have any fancy credits. I'm bitter. I'm older. I don't have as much time. So like just when make people your... ask me for credits, I usually just write something random and I I, I was gonna say just make your own credits. <laughs> I just say can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I just say random I don't so that 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 has also been my uh, not just for comedy, that's also um I feel like in on a resume you have to, you know, things down because you have to let the person that's hiring you know you can actually do the job like I worked in long-term care and I worked at ChemH with people with mental health issues and I and I did this program you know looks like okay if she did that she could do this but mm -hmm. how does that work in comedy like comedy is so subjective like I might find something funny nobody like you know what I mean like oh yeah for sure Bill Burr is funny but then not everyone thinks Amy Schumer is funny but then some people think Louis C.K. is hilarious but some people yeah. You love Hannah Gatsby. Like it's just like it's so personal. Yeah. Exactly, not... and that's that's why we have all these options. But the fact that like some people actually go out of their way to hate on people that say specific things, it's kind of ridiculous. Like when Dave Chappelle kind of really uh, released his um, Sticks and Stones, and how everybody was like hating on that so much. And now look at him. He's got that uh, what um, Mark Twain Award or whatever. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so he yeah, just yeah, had that, that. that special come out on um, on yeah, Netflix. I saw that. that was really boring, though. Sarah Silverman did a tribute to him, and she's great. I love her, but yeah, just, I don't like awards. That's another pet peeve I have is awards. <laughs> Never doing awards. How do you judge? Okay, the only awards that should be given out are um, in the in sports. Yeah, because like, you can physically, you can actually see like them performing way better than other yeah. people. Or if you find a cure. Or develop yeah. something in science. Mm -hmm. Or you did something that benefited humanity in a very, very, like, you know, like, well, serious like, way. Don't they have, like, the Nobel... Yeah, I was going to say, don't they have the Nobel Prize for that? And um... Yeah, there's the Nobel yeah. Peace Prize, but, like, even that is, like, subjective, like, a little bit. Yeah. You know? um, 
if people like oh that person got it or that person got it like i mean like a science award like where you develop something like you know a cure or a vaccine that helped millions of people or something like that yeah. okay imagine if we paid scientists what they paid actors yeah it's ridiculous and it's like can you like the whole thing about like getting award like like awards like the best film like sometimes films win academy awards and you watch them like 20 years later and you're like that movie is garbage and yet yeah. a, a movie that was overlooked didn't get an award mm -hmm. oh that happens all the time it becomes a classic right like some yeah. random like you know like movie like mm -hmm. it's just the whole so the whole thing um you know getting the canadian comedy awards like <laughs> what, what the fuck is that? Everyone has one of those, it seems. You know, nominated. Yeah. People put on their credits. Nominated. You you didn't win. You were nominated. Like yeah. You were nominated. Like you're not a winner. You're a loser. <laughs> but but yeah, they do they do that for actors too in like movies. Like oh, this was nominated for this. It could it had the potential to win, but it didn't. <laughs> you you came in third. Yeah. No no no. Like I don't know. It just seems like if you're nominated and you didn't win, then you lost. Yeah. Because it's like um, uh, the ball like Talladega Nights with Will Ferrell. It's like, if you ain't first, you're last. <laughs> I know. Like, it makes me sound like a, like a horrible... I just think it's... Okay, I don't care what it makes me sound like. You just whatever. have a lot of pet peeves. <laughs> like, I, I just... I have a lot of issues. A lot of pet peeves. Yeah. Um, I just think everyone should just own their freak flag. Do what they do. If you want to do it, just fucking do it. And don't worry yeah. about, like, what other people are doing. Because... Nobody really cares what you're doing. Yeah. They're just, they don't really care. They're just jealous. And if you have better credits than them, they're jealous of you. And even if they're yeah. like, oh, like, I don't even, I, cause I guess I don't trust anybody. Like, it's like, oh, it's so great. Like, we're so supportive. No, you're not. I don't believe you. Yeah. <laughs> I don't a lot of, a lot of people compete with each other rather than just compete with themselves. And I feel like that's what people need to change. It's like rather than see like, and Instagram is bad for that because a lot of people compare their lives to like the amazing lives that they see on Instagram or like whenever they're seeing like a new comedian come out and they're like, oh my God, like this guy's amazing. I've never heard of him before, but in the background, he's been working for like 10, 15 years to do that. But they're, compa they're comparing to like where he is right now. And a lot of people just got to like stop comparing to, to other people and compare like, okay, how much work are you doing right now? And are you doing the appropriate amount to get to like that said goal? Yeah, I think I think it's I think it's just about like doing the thing. Like it's yeah. about like the work. Like if you love, I mean, you know, you love acting or you love writing or you love singing or whatever, just do it, man. And like if you want to do it professionally, there's obviously there's things you have to do. You have to do it more and you have to take it more seriously and look at it yeah, more. Yeah, take as a get job. some coaches. Yeah, get coaches. Wh get more practice. Need, but, yeah. But comparing yourself to like other people is just it's a pet peeve of mine as well. <laughs> yeah like another, another upset because somebody got booked and they didn't get booked like yeah okay um i should just call this janice's pet peeves yeah i have a lot of those um yeah well, let's get on to another question okay <laughs> what has been your most it's bananas moment by that i mean what has been like the craziest moment that's happened whether in life or in comedy so whether it's good or bad just like something that made you look back and like i can't believe that just happened i can't believe i i, I had had kids and raised them and yeah. it turned out uh, to be like cool yeah <laughs> that's a bananas moment um i don't know every time i get up on stage and i do a show like in thunder bay like i did a show and like uh, for my demographic that one, the, the opening show that I did was all people mm -hmm. over 50. And they were like, they were digging my jokes. Like they were that's like, that's awesome. Like, that's so cringy now. I said, digging. Did you hear that? I said, <laughs> yeah, I did. Fucking boomer. Shoot me now. Okay, kill me. Cough on me. Go ahead. Oh, by the way, I'm, um, I'm keeping, I'm keeping this me. in. This is all raw footage, by the way. I'm not editing any of this. <laughs> digging it. Okay, look, boomers. Okay. And so that moment was like, oh my God, I, this is, it was so, it was like, there, every everything was the stars were aligned. Like when those moments happen, those are, those are crazy, and they're they're crazy because they're not. You know, I'm not on like a huge like television show or oh my god, so crazy! I walked the red carpet at the Academy Awards. Like I don't even think that would, that would just be like whatever. Like I would probably find so many like sarcastic things if that happened. I mean, it would be cool <laughs> if they put me up yeah. in a hotel and they fed me, but mm -hmm. those type of things 
when I'm doing, when I'm in a room and there's like, it's full of people, like you're doing like a sold out show. Like when I did the Jewish comedy festival, I was up there. That was kind of crazy though. Cause it was a room full of my people, which is terrifying. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but the, there's those moments that are like wow this is really like I can't believe this and then you just go and everything you've worked for all the open mics all the times you've bombed you know all the times and you just it just all comes together and you like I'm, I, I, I can do this you know and like you just yeah. get up on stage and you just it just happens and just mm -hmm. it's like there and it's like that right moment it's like it's like um i have this quote actually on my board right now it's like it's luck is what happens when preparation meets opportunity yeah and those are moments like yeah you know because then then it's over and then you know it's back to like you know six nights seven nights a week of open mics and then no shows again for weeks and like you get mm -hmm. a show and like there's three people there and um but it's stage time and it's getting you practice yeah. But it's that and it's it's like you're there too like it's great because you're there with like your peers that like you ground with like you know mm -hmm. that you were you know at these all the mics with and like all the yeah. like the times where you did shows like you know hosting at einstein's those times where like there was nobody there and you're there mm -hmm. with the same people at, at a show where like it, you i mean i do really love when i go to a club and i see a comic that you know I, i've seen at other like that we've come up together and you see them on stage and they're killing it i feel like yeah good for you man you know like i i it, it does fill me with a sense of joy um of course there's the flip side of that when when i i see people killing it and i'm jealous it's usually yeah. other women that i'm, <laughs> I'm like i'm like she is so much funnier and prettier and younger than me i will i will never succeed yeah but <laughs> hey with that right now she is so fucking good um <laughs> <laughs> but then like part of me goes well you know you do it girl you do it you know mm -hmm. oh yeah yeah um, i know it's one of those things where it's like you wish you started earlier to do this kind of stuff but then again i mean like as long as you're starting it that's the key goal is starting it so you don't regret it later i don't think if i i i think too though like if i'd started earlier i, I don't think um i would have been ready for the things that i'm ready for now like i think i'm yeah. ready for anything now that's good and everything everything that i lived up until this moment has brought me to where i am so um, mm -hmm. I feel like maybe I'm speaking to, you know, my peers like that, you mm -hmm. know, those shows where the, my demographic is, is, is there. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's also fun making young people laugh too. Like, cause like I say, like before, like I said, like they underestimate, underestimate you kind of thing. Right. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Appeal to that, you know? Yeah. So are you working on anything exciting right now that people could check out? Like you said, you were going to think about starting your own podcast talking about uh women problems <laughs> i i have a few ideas i don't i don't really know where i'm at right now um i'm yeah. trying to just get through quarantine <laughs> i mean aren't we all i'm just trying to like figure out what i'm gonna do for money like aside from the free money that i might get from the government um yeah so yeah i i, I think i might want to I think that might be what I have to do is start up something like that where I can. Yeah, I don't know. It's weird. It's a weird time. I don't have anything on the horizon um, right now. You can start up an, an OnlyFans account or just become a cam girl. <laughs> I've thought of that. Um, yeah. I put that uh, to my daughters. They thought it was gross. I said, look, there's freaks out there. Okay. There's something. And they have money. There are gross men out there and they have money. And I want that. <laughs> yeah. They, they want that. Um, yeah. Uh, a friend of mine posted me the other day about uh, how, you know, young girls on Instagram, they're, you know, they're, they're showing so much skin. And I'm like, you know, if I had the body, I'd do it. That's the only regret I have is not doing that when I could have. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was cleaning my basement and I found an old picture of myself in the 80s, like mm -hmm. sort of a glam shot, like when I was acting. And I'm like, you know, I, I totally should have, you know, showed more skin back then. You know, that yeah. was my mistake was to... If know, only you slept with Harvey Weinstein, you could have been a millionaire you know, right now. You know, I remember I, I did have a director ask me if I would take my clothes off one time. I was auditioning for a play in, in Hamilton, of all places. Of course, it was Hamilton. <laughs> yeah, of course, it was Hamilton, right? And uh, the guy was... it was The part was for a prostitute, and it was a great mm -hmm. play, right, back in the 80s. And yeah. I remember I, I memorized the script, and I was, you know, I, I researched the role, and I went there. 
And then at the end of the audition, he goes, wow, you really, you really researched that role. And he asked me to take all my clothes off. And I, I told him to go fuck himself and walked out. I thought I was so badass. Yeah. <laughs> I taking off my fucking clothes and got the part. What, I was so stupid, right? I yeah. had principles. Look yeah. <laughs> where principles have led me, girls. Look. Yeah. <laughs> this is what happens to you when you have principles. Just, just sleep with the director. If I had a chance to sleep with the director, I would. Yeah, exactly. When you, you know, I didn't even need wires back then. They were just like, you know, where they should be, you know. My yeah. Uh, anyways. That's why smaller is better because it keeps them perkier longer. You're speaking from a man from experience, a man with experience. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Um, women have so many choices now. Be empowered, ladies. Uh, no, I yeah, don't have so anything. That's on a message. Horizon. Who knows? I guess that's a message we should send out today. Be empowered. I'm not going anywhere. Um, yeah. We'll see. If, I don't even know how to get booked on online shows because I guess you have to show up. Like how I used to get booked on regular shows was I would just show up at the venue and then. Yeah. I think that's what they're doing still on like the. Like on TSUC, I've seen a couple of them. I'm, I, I think you're not a part of that right now. I think I deleted myself from TSUC again. Yeah. Did you? <laughs> I was on, yeah. on TSUC. Yeah. I deleted myself from TSUC. And then two years later, I added myself again. And then I deleted myself again. So, yeah. Um, yeah, probably. Because, um, you know, TSUC, it's like I'm booking a show and then 150 comments, you know. Yeah. So. Maybe I'll start, I'll, yeah. I'll, I was going to say, just start your own show. If anything, like, I'm sure some other comedians will be happy to, like, do something like that with you and, and help out. Yeah, I have to figure out how, to, how all that works. And how yeah. Because, like, I know what people, yeah, you have, like, a private code. Like, if you're, I, I think you can do that with, like, the WebEx one. So if you can have, like, up to 100 people unlimited time. So you can just, like, charge people, like, for whatever for for putting in a code or whatever so that they don't yeah, share it I, I don't know I how all, all the logistics of it works so i haven't done that yet i also have friends like all over the country so they could actually come to one of my online shows you know they obviously can't come to shows when i'm yeah under bay or if i'm even in shows in toronto most of the shows i do are in toronto anyways mm -hmm. um and you know people like my de my demographic or whatever um they're all over the country um some people are even not in the country so i think that the online shows are good that way people would yeah. really, like pay 10 bucks to get access to a link and if you have 100 people maybe you can actually make money as yeah. opposed to like when you invite people to come and see a show there's the show is free but then they end up having to buy a beer mm -hmm. and buy food so this way they don't have to buy a beer and food they just you just get the money and um yeah so, so I have to figure out all that, but um, yeah. who knows? Um, so do you edit all this? This is do you just like edit all this together? Or you just like s I kind of just like yeah, like I make it look kind of nice on the screen so that both of our faces are nice and put together, and then just let it happen. <laughs> Good, cool. Yeah, um, yeah, it's been fun. Um, yeah. Well, um, I like to I like to finish this off on like a little bit of a positive note. So what are you doing to to keep positive? Because I know there's a lot of negativity out there right now, especially with like the amount of bullshit that people are spreading on Facebook, Instagram, whatever. Oh. Um, but well, what what are you doing to keep positive? I'm quarantining right now with my like I say my two adult daughters and my husband. I have, I have a third daughter who's quarantining with her boyfriend. She, she hasn't left the house in days. Yeah. We we started this spoken word thing on the on the belt on the on the deck in the backyard mm -hmm. which is really cringy so uh, <laughs> we did that i don't know i'm just spending time with my family i'm doing um i do some writing like i'm always writing stuff uh keep yeah. positive i don't know i cleaning my house um cooking you know i'm up and down i don't i'm trying not to be negative on facebook yeah um i try not i try to go on facebook less Mm -hmm. um, than I did. Um, there's no, there's no point in being negative because the world is pretty negative right now. Yeah. I don't know. What it... I try to do to stay positive. Like today, I put makeup on because I knew I was going to be seeing you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and so, you look gorgeous, by the way. Thank you. Um, I feel like when I do a podcast or an online show, it, I, I kind of look at it like I'm going out. Yeah. Nice. But definitely, you should, you should. Yeah, you should definitely start up your own podcast and yeah. uh, let people know. Just start talking to random people because people love 
coming on like i'm i'm glad you came on like because i have more people that are going to be coming up in future episodes and people just love talking like everybody that i've been talking to so far they love they have a great conversation with me and i i really appreciate everybody that's been on so far you're on you're episode 36 Ah, nice. Um, yeah. You have to learn how to edit it, though, right? I don't know how to do any of that. So Honestly, like, you don't have to do much to it. Like, I kind of just f figured out a way to make it, like, really simple for the editing process. Um, <laughs> but, mo but most people, they... Yeah, I'm a, I'm a natural video editor. Yeah, so like, I love when people say that. Oh, you don't have to do much. You just stick the NG and the suit, the, 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 the gigs and the, the bites and the, the, the honks and the wonks. And it's no problem. Essentially, you could just make like an Instagram live video or a Facebook live video and just do that. And that way you don't even have to do any editing and you get out. You can just do the podcast live if you don't want to like have to like cut out any like it like us or whatever, just to kind of like make it like nice. And if you want to make it like that and have it like fully edited, yeah, that'll take a little bit more time. But then if you just do a Facebook live then you don't have to worry about all of it and you can actually engage with people that are that are coming in. When, OK, so maybe we could talk about how to do that another time. Yeah, for sure. All right. Not on a podcast, and you can. Um, yeah, and I'm hoping. Um, I'm I'm really curious to see. I'm just really curious to see how the this whole. I think the whole the, obviously the whole world is going to change, but how it's going to change the arts and music and. Yeah, exactly. And, and um, you know, the kind of humor, what we find funny. Yeah. To tolerate, is it going to be less PC, more PC? Are we going to want to have more observational humor that? You know, are we going to want to look inside, look outside? Like, it's just interesting to me. To see, yeah. Like, what people are going to come up with. I think it's just, like, a whole, like, roller coaster with, like, this whole PC thing. Because, like, even looking at George Carlin's time, like, people were pretty PC back then. And then it's just, like, kind of dipped down. Like, nobody cared about it. And then now everybody's all PC. And then it eventually dipped back down. Where not a lot of people even give a shit about it. So I think we're eventually going to get into a time where it just doesn't. Like, nobody cares about being too PC. Like, you're going to have, obviously, the people that are going to complain about it. But everybody, at the end of the day, is going to be like, who cares? Yeah. So yeah. we'll probably get there. <laughs> Especially yeah. after all of this is already over. Yeah, which, which they're saying it's going to last till the fall. So. Well, we'll see. <laughs> Summer is canceled, kids. Yeah. You don't, have to, you don't have to worry about that beach body now. <laughs> <laughs> or we come out of... We come out of this quarantine jacked as shit. I know. That's what, that's actually what I'm working on right now. Like, I'm just pumping up. Like, every day I've been doing, like, at-home workouts. I'm like, I'm, I'm going to try to get a Chris Hemsworth body. I'm going to try to do that. What are, all, what, are, what are all the Hollywood bitches doing without their Botox? Yeah, right. Or, like, going to the hair salon. Like, nobody's going to... No hair salon. I'm a silver fox, ladies. Oh, my God. <laughs> silver fox. It's all right. I'm going, like... If you look at my hair, it's like straight to like white. Like you can see the white in it a little bit. I don't know if you can tell on the quality, but I'm not even. I'm not, I don't even go to gray. Like I'm, my hair's just going straight to white. Look at my nails. Don't have any. It's all natural. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right. Well. Okay. It's yeah. good to talk to you. Yes, to Janice. Thank on. you. Thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate okay. it. All right. And thank you guys. Uh, yeah. Thank you guys for tuning in uh, to the podcast. If you enjoy this, don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, this happens every Monday at 9 a.m. Um, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Let's peel out.